The heart is a beautiful and dynamic organ. I'm driven to poke into the mystery of the heart disease mechanism and develop better drug therapies to help people. We think there needs to be a paradigm shift in developing drug therapies to anti-arrhythmia. We need to integrate the behavior of many different molecules in this whole cell. So our lab, we focus on integrating the behaviors of molecules. The cardiac signaling lab is an interdisciplinary team where we combine experimental investigation with mathematical modeling to understand the complex dynamics in the heart. UC Davis, uh, I've been here for about eight years and we built, I think, a really a remarkable group of collaborative uh, scientists who are focused on really trying to understand how the heart works at the, from the molecular level to the level of disease in heart failure and arrhythmias. And one of the unique things is that we have a real collaborative environment where labs such as uh, the Chinizu and Izu labs interact with a lot of other labs around UC Davis to build that network to understand things from the very fundamental molecular scale all the way to uh, what goes on in patients at the larger level. The heart is like the engine of life. It pumps blood throughout our body every second. And it has to pump more than three billion times in a human lifespan. The great challenge is that the heart is controlled by nonlinear dynamic systems. The three systems are the electrical system, the calcium control system, and the muscle contractile system. So in our lab, we have been developing innovative new techniques to enable studying the feedback interaction between these three systems. The experimental part of the lab looks at trying to get fundamental descriptions of each of the subsystems. And what we do in the computational part of the lab is to put all these, all these subsystems together and try to see how, how they all behave when they're interacting with each other. So what I'm doing as a mathematician is trying to describe how each part interacts with each other, how each one influences each other, and what is the emergent behavior that comes from this interaction. I think that we have entered a, a new stage in the study of cardiac cells. Previously, we've studied cells in isolation, completely independent of, of an environment, and now we put it into a gel matrix simulating the in vivo conditions, the mechanical conditions of the heart. And now that we've discovered that they behave completely differently in this environment, I think this will give us much better understanding how cells behave in situ in the heart. And this will give us new strategies for developing antiarrhythmic drug therapies. And our studies could not have progressed so far without having this gel, which has really wonderful chemical properties. And this gel was developed by Dr. Kit Lam. My role in this research is to apply chemical techniques to develop a uh, 3D gel matrix. In addition, uh, I, as an expert in combinatorial chemistry, we can find discover ligands that bind to cell surface receptors. So those cell surface receptor ligands can be incorporated into this gel matrix that again can now allow us to in a, a pure chemical system to study how those extracellular chemical or, or receptor interaction can affect the cell function. So the new insights that we get from studying the cells in their natural mechanical environment will give us a better understanding of how cells behave in the normal heart, in the diseased hearts, and these new insights will help us develop new strategies for antiarrhythmic drugs. So we have a long-standing collaboration with the Chen Itsu and the Itsu lab to try to understand the molecular mechanism of cardiac arrhythmia. Cardiac arrhythmia is a really common problem. And the very fact that 
our current treatment paradigm is highly inadequate clinically. The knowledge and the insight that we gain from the study will be very important. They are one of the few labs that truly work at the interface between biology and engineering. I feel with the new technology development, now we are at a position to understand better and develop better drug therapies.